All right, thank you, Meredith. So let's talk about the division. And when I look at the American League East, you could say every team has had some additions, probably some nice ones, but they've also had some subtractions, which Flash, I think, is a great equalizer. Yeah, I agree, Bob. I mean, you can look at every club in the American League East, and there are question marks all the way around. Boston had some big offensive guys come in this year. Their rotation is going to be a major concern. Tampa Bay is devastated, a new manager, so there's really a lot to talk about in this division. All right, so let's break them down individually. If there's one team that has, in your mind, the least question marks going in, which team is it? I think you look at the Toronto Blue Jays, and they, they bring in Josh Donaldson from Oakland, a big slugger in the middle of the lineup, going to play third base for them, and then obviously the signing of Russell Martin. I mean, it's going to be a great addition to their lineup, a great job with the pitching staff. But the one biggest concern is the bullpen. Brett Cecil is your yeah. closer. And then we don't know who the rest of your bullpen is. And I'll tell you what, I'm a little surprised that they didn't do a better job addressing that. It almost seemed like they forgot about it and will find guys in spring training. I know they have a lot of good young pitchers with some big arms, but that's a major concern for me. Is there more pressure on the starters knowing that they don't know what's behind them? So do they have to go six? Do they have to go seven? How deep in a game do they have to go? Well, just think about it. If you're a Yankee starter, you're thinking, I go five innings, I feel pretty good about my bullpen. You're a Toronto Blue Jays starter, you're thinking, I better go seven innings and only give the bullpen six outs. That's a lot of pressure. All right, so one thing I thought you were going to say, the team with the least question marks, might be the Baltimore Orioles. Coming into the season, they wear the crown until yeah. somebody knocks it off. You lose Mark Kakis, that's going to hurt. You lose Nelson Cruz and all that power, that's going to be a concern. But you can flip it and say, we have Matt Wieters, who's going to start the year on the DL. He will be back, a productive player behind the plate, and Machado at third base. So it kind of equals out with all those question marks and some of the losses that they have. What will Chris Davis do? I mean, last yeah. year was such a down year after the big year before. He's a big question mark in their lineup. See, here's what I wonder about in terms of the lineup. With Marquecas gone, who was a fan favorite, a yeah. Peter, An Peter Angelo's favorite, and Nelson Cruz, you're missing about 45 homers and 158 runs batted in. Davis was lesser of a player. Machado got injured. Yep. Weeders was hurt, so they didn't have him. They learned to live without him. That's a lot of offense out. How do you think that affects him? You know, it affects him. You know, obviously, Weeders is an all star type guy behind the plate, a switch hitter, and he's going to miss a little time at the beginning of the year. If you're Buck Showalter, you're hoping that's not going to be a major loss for a couple of months. My big thing with Baltimore is Buck Showalter. This guy finds a way to win every year without the big names in his lineup. He'll figure out a way to win in Baltimore. All right, let's talk about the Boston Red Sox. They want to do another worst to first yeah. scenario again, and they brought in the big hitters, Handley Romero's and Pablo Sandoval to do that, but is that enough for this team? They're going to have some offense, but to do they have the pitching to go with it? Well, that's the biggest question mark up in Boston. And Sandoval obviously has great postseason experience and puts up huge numbers. And that's what everybody remembers, which is great. You have to get to the postseason. I yeah. mean, his numbers during the year are very pedestrian-like for a third baseman, but still a nice signing. Hanley Ramirez is going to mash in that park. I mean, the green monster, he's going to eat it up up there. And then obviously you have the second baseman, Pedroia, who's a solid player. They're going to be good offensively, but Joe Kelly, what's he going to do? Rick Porcello, mm -hmm. the biggest name is Clay Buckholz who you will say, you know what, he can be an ace, but he hasn't been an ace the last couple of years. His stuff has diminished, so the biggest question marks in Boston will be that rotation. All right, let's move on to the Tampa Bay Rays. Obviously, I think people think about the players, but you also think about the manager. Yeah. Joe Madden had a collection, a vast collection of players and misfit toys, if you will, and he managed to put them all together and win a few divisions and get to a World Series. Kevin Cash is totally unproven. Yeah, can he do what Joe Madden did? I mean, you're right. Joe Madden came in there with players that you didn't have a whole lot of expectations for, and he got them to a World Series. I mean, he was a master at manipulating some talent without the big names. Kevin Cash, I think, is going to be a very good major league manager, but can he jump in year one and do the same thing? Evan Longoria is back. He has to have a monster mm -hmm. year for them to compete. They have some nice names in the rotation. Chris Archer probably be their number one type guy, but I don't expect them to compete in this division. One final thought on the division, I think with all these changes we've talked about, if you're a team and you go into a three-game series, let's say with the Jays, instead of losing two or three, you win two or three, you can do that a few times. Those wins add up. It changes, let's say, an 85-win season to a 90-92 win season. Well, I think if you're talking 90, 92, 93 wins, that's probably that's going to be good enough for this division. I think everybody's going to beat up on each other. The top four teams, obviously, when you go into Tampa, they come into your place. you got to find a way to take at least two out of